Here we have a top view and a front view of a block that has several different surfaces. We have inclined surfaces and oblique surfaces and um, orthogonal surfaces. So we want to sh show each surface in its true shape, basically, and uh, that so that we can get you know other measurements off of it, like like their slope or their dip or their strike or just the shape of it. So uh, we can look at uh, surface A to start with, and it consists of uh, points X, Y, and Z. I've taken the liberty to measure, take some measures using the lower left corner in the front view as 0, 0, 0, X, 0, Z, and using the horizontal, uh, the reference line between the horizontal and frontal planes as, as my 0 and the Y, so I can see depth in the top view here, or the horizontal plane. So I've taken the liberty of, of putting the uh, 3D coordinates of each of these points based on the depth, uh, which would be the Y coordinates of each of these points. So uh, point X would be 0 in the X coordinate, would be point 4, that would be 4 tenths of an inch, uh, we're using inches in this case, from the reference line, and point 0.65, which is the height of this block in the front view. And likewise, 0, 1 inch and 0.65 also for the uh, Z coordinate in, uh, for the Y point. And Z also has 0.65 in the Z coordinate and 1 inch from in the X and 1 inch in the Y. So as we can see, all three of these points have the same Z coordinate. So we're looking at the true length of all three lines and the on surface A, so it's shown in its true shape already. And if we look at the front view, we can see that the line at X or Y, Z, they're, they're collinear in the front view. And so I see surface A as an edge in the front view. Therefore, if I project it perpendicularly, which is happening, although it looks a little tilted, uh, then I see it in the true shape in the adjacent view, being the horizontal plane or the top view here. Okay, so I want to draw this shape in AutoCAD 3D and take a look at its other surfaces. We'll try to project the other surfaces to their true shapes. There's another technique for doing that, which I want to go over in AutoCAD. So let's jump on over to AutoCAD. Okay, so I'm going to type in, I'm going to draw surface XYZ first, so with the 3D polyline. The x coordinate being 0 0.4.65, the y coordinate being 0, 1. Well, I have to type in a hashtag to force the coordinates to be absolute. So at 0, 1, 0.65. Go. And the Z coordinate, hashtag uh, 1, 1, 0.65. And then close it. So that's surface A. So if I go to my top view, you can see surface A just very much like what the coordinates say. Okay, uh, I'm going to place point W, which will make surface B. I already have the X and Y coordinates. So I'm just going to draw a line um, starting at, at X, going to W. Uh, I do want a poly, 3D polyline because we're going to make this a 3D object. So uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.250. Pivot around a little bit so we can kind of see. So again, a 3D polyline. We'll start at point X here. And then uh, hashtag and 0.5, comma, 0.25, comma, and 0 is our Z coordinate. So it's all the way on the ground, basically. And then I'll come back up to point Z and close. So that draws the line from Z back to X. So now I have three um, sided surfaces here, A and B. Uh, the rest of it 
is um, just straight lines um, from these points. So I'll just draw a line. Uh, well, I'll do the three polylines here again. Starting at this surface, straight down. And those are at, um, well, their coordinates are at 0.65, and it goes down to zero, so they're 0.65 in length. So I can track that. I think I can track that straight down. Polar and polar. Come back up to this corner and close it. So I've made that polyline. So that would be the side surface. And then we have another surface connecting X and W. And um, well, there's a line at the bottom. So this is the bottom surface of the whole. Um, so that would be the points, the two points uh, underneath the X and Y, uh, the point at W, and a point right under Z. So we'll try to build that one. So again, a 3D polyline, and draw these points, track straight under Z, I'll just type it in, 0.65, there we go. And then, so that's one, two, three, and then back to closing it. And then one more 3D polyline. So I have the bottom surface, the side, um, this one. I'm missing a surface here, and we'll see that in a minute. But let's go ahead and draw the surface that makes up the back. Close that. So we have a surface in the back. And another surface. Go ahead and close that. So now it's closed. And so I'm only missing. So if I turn all these to surfaces, I'll have a hole in this, this part of one. So let's do one more 3D polyline. Don't forget to close it. There we go. Okay, so um, they're just 3D polylines. So in conceptual view, I'm not seeing much of much of anything. But I do have a polygon for every a 3D polygon polyline. I'm sorry for each surface. So I can turn all of these to surfaces. So under the solid editing, I can convert to surface. So I'm going to use that tool. Select all the surfaces, all the, the 3D polylines, and now they're all surfaces. Well, those do, that doesn't do me a whole lot of good until I'd like to produce this as a 3D solid. Although, I, well, I could just leave it like it is. But uh, we'll take one more step here, and we'll go to, I think, under the surface, solid, um, surface. There's a sculpt tool. And this creates a 3D solid out of all those surfaces. So now if I hover my cursor over it, it's a it's considered a 3D solid. If I just select the solid and hit delete, I still have the original um, edges. So I could I could get those back if I had to. But anyway, I have a 3D solid over it. Okay, so now I can produce my top and front view here at least. Over here, I'm not going to put much space in between it because it needs some room. Um, I'll leave that off too. Okay, so here are my two shapes, my two views. Keep them here, lower. Not much space in between them. Okay, so I already have surface A here as a true shape, but what about surface B? Um, I do have one line that one edge of surface B that is its true length. So I can go from that. And what I want to do is project it perpendicular 
or uh, basically produce a line of sight that's parallel to uh, line XZ, which is in its true length, which is a edge of surface B. So probably a easy way to do that. Let me just go to the phantom layer, just draw a simple line and just make it perpendicular to that edge. Make it a little longer so I can see the dashes be prettier that way. There you go. Okay, now I need to project uh, surface B um, a lot, uh, you know, perpendicular to this uh, reference line. So um, I just need to find out where uh, points. So this basically X and Z become uh, on become a point. So this line X Z becomes a point in this in this view. So um, let's. I just need to draw another reference line here. I'll get shorter later. So I need to measure the distance that X and Z, you'll see that they're the same. So let's draw a circle. There. So the radius of this circle is the distance that X and Z are from. So I'm going to get an extension. An intersection going here. Uh, perhaps not. So maybe I'll need to draw a construction line here. Extension. Just go past it a little bit. Move the circle now to the intersection. And there is at the intersection of the circle and this line is the line XZ as a point label that but what I really want to do is uh, copy this line being parallel to point W and extending that off so extension it's polar and extension there we go and I'd like that to be a construction line as well as well as that one. Okay, so all I have to do is measure the distance with another circle. That point W is from the reference line intersection. So there's point W. So if I draw a line, object line, from point X, y, X, Z to point W here, there we go. I wanted that to be an object line, except I made this an object line. Okay, so from the intersection of that circle, that's that represents that intersection represents points X and Y, and this represents points point W. So now I have X and um, X and Z, sorry, <laughs> as a point out here, and then W, and so that represents a an edge of point of of plane um, X Z W. So now that it's drawn as a plane, I can project it um, perpendicularly um, to find the true shape of plane B. So an easy way to do that is use the offset command and I'll just put 0.5 as an offset distance I'll project it down. And I'll get rid of these circles. This on my phantom layer for my reference line, Make it a little longer. I want polar, I want extension because it's not exactly. It's okay, 
it's not exactly uh, horizontal. So now I just need to measure. But I just lengthen it. It's long enough. Get a little bit closer. Okay, so I want to measure in the top view where the points um, x, z, yeah, x, z, and w, um, and I'm going to project them into a view um, to the lower right of this, or just beneath to the lower and right of of this surface B that is drawn as a plane, or as a uh, as I can see it as an edge in this view. So projecting it perpendicular to this edge will produce the true shape of, of the plane B. Okay, so I want to measure this distance W. I'll move that circle. Well, I need a line first. So point W is right here. And I need to be perpendicular To lengthen. There we go. Now I can move my circle to the intersection, and this will be point W. Likewise, I can get X and Z. So let's do X. It'll be another large distance. I need a line perpendicular, so I'll just copy this line. Both X and Z will lie along that line. The intersection of the circle of the projection line and the reference line. So here's point X, the intersection, and here's point W. So maybe I'll draw that line. Um, let me just I'm just gonna go ahead and get Z in here. So point Z, its distance from the reference line. Pick it up, put it at the projection of point Z to the reference line. So here's point Z. So if I change my layer to the object layer and draw the surface, I'll just use a polyline this time. So intersection, it's actually an intersection, not the quadrant. It's very close to it, but and then that Z, this is X, so make sure not on there. And then W is the intersection of this other circle with this line, so there's the intersection and close. So this is, get these circles out of the way. This is the true shape of surface B. Another thing to point out is since this is a top adjacent view, well, actually, the surface B is shown as an edge in a, in a view adjacent to the top view. This shows, this is incapable of showing me the slope. It shows me no um, um, vertical, it shows me no Z coordinate. This is this is all X and Y, so I can't see um, slope. Now I can see uh, the slope of the line, um, the well, the surface in the um, slope you know, well, the slope of surface B in a view that's adjacent to the top view that shows. So this this view right here of surface B does show me the slope of um, surface B.